All right, hello, Integrated Math 3 students that are distance learners. Um, this is going to be our very first video lesson that you'll be doing this year, uh, learning math. And uh, uh, before we get started, I sort of wanted to just talk about this course as a whole. Um, <clears throat> Integrated Math 3 is definitely a step up from the last two math classes that you've learned. Um, so it's very important that you are practicing as much as possible and, and uh, getting some experience with these, these difficult topics. Uh, however, today what we're going to be focusing on is last year's topics, just a little bit of review with Integrated Math 2 standards. Um, to go along with this, you have a Delta Math assignment that's going to be linked on Kidum for you to go in and work. Uh, the due date for that is uh, this Friday, August 21st by midnight. Okay, so make sure that you get that knocked out as you are uh, going through the week. You can obviously rewatch this video multiple times to, um, to to practice with or look at examples. Delta Math has plenty of examples to look at for you to learn through. Feel free to email me if you need any extra help. I can make a quick instructional video and just send that out to you. It'd be no problem. So just uh, just be in, keep in touch with me as you go through the week. So uh, to start us off, here are the topics that we're going to be talking about. So these were what we would consider the essential topics of Integrated Math 2. So there's quite a bit. And on Delta Math, we are going to look through the examples that you're going to be assessed on. I'm not really going to be reteaching this necessarily. I'm just going through them again. Okay. Uh, so you're going to get a little bit of practice on Delta Math to make sure that you understand these. So we're going to start with the, uh, with the first topic over here, um, adding, subtract, and multiply polynomials. So let me switch my displays here. We're going to, not that one, there we go. Okay, so I've got a split screen here. Uh, so over on the left, you'll see the type of question that you'll be working on. Let me move that, make that a little bit bigger. So this is a adding and subtracting polynomials. So that was that first topic that we're gonna look at. So we have the polynomials here. We have 8x squared minus 7x minus two subtract we're going to subtract 6x squared minus x plus 3. All right, so now you can see my handwriting. I know it's beautiful. Uh, hopefully it's legible for you. Uh, the key with this, uh, when you're subtracting polynomials, hopefully you remember this from last year, whenever you're dealing with a negative, okay, it's uh, a lot of teachers teach this different ways. Um, you can deal with it or not, I'm going to tell you that the best way to deal with this negative is to do what's called keep change. Change, that means we keep this one the same, we change this to a positive, and then we change all the signs in here. So this becomes a positive, excuse me, <laughs> I did that wrong, hold on, let me undo that. That becomes, it was a positive, it becomes a negative this becomes a positive and now this becomes a negative. Okay, so now it all becomes addition. That's why we want to do that. Now, another way that you could think about this, let me erase all this, is distributing that negative into this. So if I distribute that negative within this, what you're doing is you're multiplying everything by a negative, negative one, it changes that to a plus, this is a minus, plus, and a minus. So that's the idea. Now what we're what we want to do is we want to look for like terms. Like terms have the same variable and the same power. So the same variable we have x is here. We're looking at x squared. x squared and x squared. Okay, so now I need to add the coefficient. So we what we have here is 8x and negative 6x. So 8x plus negative 6x is 2x. So it's 8x squared plus negative 6x squared. So 2x squared. We want to start with uh, with this, okay? To uh, with the highest power first, okay? And we're gonna it's gonna get into what's called standard form. Next, we look for the next highest power. We have the x term right here. So we have negative 7x plus positive x. What is the coefficient in front of this? Well, it is a one. That looks bad. <laughs> but it's a one in front of that, one x. So we have negative seven x plus one x, that is minus six x. 
And then the last one is going to be, uh, we add the constants, so the negative two and the negative three. So that should give us negative five. Okay, so we go over here to Delta Math. So let's talk about how to type in Delta Math. So in Delta Math, we want to start, we want to put it in standard form. You'll notice how we have the 2x squared. So I push 2x. Now, on your keyboard, you can just click here, and it has this option here to put the square. And that's really all you need to do. So then we type the rest of it, minus 6x, minus 5. You submit the answer. It's going to ask you if you're sure. Yes. There it is. I got a check mark. Okay. So the next question, this one's a, a addition. Just add the like terms. You got it. Okay. Uh, so let me start a new page here. Hopefully this doesn't mess me up. Ah, got to readjust that. Okay, not bad. All right. Uh, let's look at multiplication now. So on our, let's go back to this display. Here's our topics. We want to find, or we want to now multiply polynomials. So I did add, subtract. We want to multiply now. So let's go back to the assignment. We want to multiply polynomials. Here's what you're going to look look at on multiplying. Now, last year you probably did two binomials being multiplied by each other, but in this one, all the problems are going to be a binomial times a trinomial. So you're not going to be using FOIL method. I think most of the integrated math two teachers taught the box method, so that's exactly what I'm going to be using in this class. Let's go ahead and set this up. So we have a two term by a three term. So that's going to make me set up my box. Let me go ahead and make sure I have the right display here. So we have a, a two term times a three term. So we call this binomial and trinomial. So binomial times trinomial. That means I want a box that is a two by three. So I'm going to draw a little box here. You can do this on your paper. And I want it to be two terms so that the terms are three x and positive five. So three x plus five. And then I write the rest of them up here. Two x squared plus x plus five. That's how I want to write those out. Now we just go to each box and we're multiplying rows and columns. So this is three X times two X. So three times two is six X squared times X is X cubed. Okay. So there's the, the term there uh, for that box. Now I go to the next one. Three X times X is three X squared. Five times three X is 15 X. And then two X squared times five is 10 X squared. And then X times five is five X. And then five times five, 25. Now what's typically gonna happen with these multiplication problems, actually pretty much all of the ones, especially in Delta math, you're gonna multiple, you're gonna have to add the like terms that are in these boxes. So some people just take them, they'll take each term and uh, they will write it out. Write them all out side by side with their signs on them. So I'm gonna do that. But as honor students, I fully expect that you'll be able to just go ahead and add them. See how I drew these red lines? Those are the like terms there. So I'm adding like terms, starting with the highest power. We want to keep it in standard form. So 6x cubed plus, let's add these like terms. So that's 13x squared. Plus, we want to add these like terms, 20x, and then 25. So now I can't add any more of the terms, no more like terms. Let's go ahead and see if that answer works. Pull up the little keyboard. We want 6x. Now to get the cube, you have to hit this button. The Oh, I'm in the way of it. Hold on, let me move the camera over here. That's probably where I'll keep it from now. So I hit, uh, let me go back. I hit 6 and then the x over here on the left. We want to raise it to the power of 3. Continue typing. Plus 13 x squared 20 x plus 25 let's see if that's right we got it okay and they show the box method for their solution if you look at the solutions for problems they're going to show or if, if you look at a an example for these questions it'll show you the box method okay so i highly recommend the box method over the distributive method it all does the same thing um, but those are the only examples we're going to look at. We could definitely get more in, in depth with these, but um, but that this is fun enough for our review for this. All right, let's look at the next topic, which is going to be um, going to be well, 
Okay, that's fine. Um, which is going to be find the intercepts of quadratic formulas. Okay, or of quadratic functions. So let's go ahead and look at that. I have put actually several properties and we're gonna group two of these together actually. Let me go back to this. We're gonna actually do both of these. Uh, we're going to do these two together. So find the x-intercepts, or it says the intercepts, which includes y-intercepts, uh, but we're gonna focus on the x-intercepts right now. Um, maximums and minimums, what we're talking about there is the vertex. Uh, so we have, there's a lot of different properties that you would have learned about quadratics uh, from last year. So let's, let's go ahead and look at this and we're gonna talk about the techniques you wanna use with this. So this one says you have the graph uh, and it, the equation is x squared. Let me show this, sorry, there you go. Uh, it shows uh, x squared minus 2x minus 3 on the accompanying set of axes. You, you must plot five points, including the roots and the vertex using the graph. Determine the roots of the equation here. Okay, so we're gonna do this the, the, the easy way, okay? So what you can do when you're working this problem is go to desmos.com and I'll, I'll put this in the video. I'm gonna put a link right now, so desmos.com and you can go uh, check this out. In Desmos, uh, we have the same options for a, a keyboard that we can use. Uh, so we're gonna type in x squared minus two x minus three. So this is gonna be the easy way. If you have your own graphing calculator, you can definitely do this, but Desmos makes it really nice because look at this. All I have to do is click on these major points. Not bad. Okay, if, if I just click on the graph on these major points, we have the x-intercepts here, the y-intercept is here, and this is the vertex. Okay, so it says to graph plot five points, so we're gonna have to find one more point. So let me show you something else that we can do. If you hit this little gear at the top, click this table button, here we have five points that we could plot, and those are shown up here. If I wanna add more, let's just put a three in here, it's gonna automatically plot those for me. So this is, Desmos is super nice for, for helping complete this right here. So let's go ahead and plot these points. I wanna do, um, this point is, let's go ahead and let's show all these so that it makes it easier for us. We have a lot of options here. We have to make sure that we get the roots and the vertex. So the roots are negative one and three. The vertex is this lowest point, so that's one negative four. All right, now we need two more points. So we can pick any points we want. Well, the y-intercept is pretty easy. Let's do zero, negative three. Now one more point, two, negative three. Why not? There it is. The graph fills itself in on delta math. Really nice. And then down here, we have to figure out um, what we need to put in here. It asks for determine the roots. Okay, so we want two numbers because there are two roots in this one. So two numbers. What are the numbers? Well, they're the intercepts here. So that would be um, it's the x-intercept, so that's negative one and positive three. So we're gonna type that in, negative one, positive three. Let's see what they say here. We got it right. So the table there, we have our table over here. The roots are identified really good. There's multiple types of questions that you're gonna be asked in this. So this one says roots. This one says determine the vertex, okay? So if I were to do this problem, I would plot it and then I would put one point, okay? If it wants the axis of symmetry, let's find one like that, vertex. Okay, equation of the axis of symmetry, that's when I would use that last option, the equation, okay? All right, so that is the, the standard that we are looking at, um, these two here. Let's factor some quadratics, okay? Factor a quadratic. This is a very important skill that will translate uh, to our course, to Integrated Math 3. So let's go ahead and look at that. So factoring a trinomial. Teachers teach this different ways, so um, your teacher may have done this differently, but uh, this is how I explain it. Um, and we're, we're going to do a, a quick one, a um, quick way and a slow way. I'm gonna start with the slow way, okay? And then we'll talk about the quick way. So we have our function here, or our quadratic, 6x plus eight. Now, we're always gonna keep in mind what this value is up here. Of course, quadratics are in the form 
uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? So it's very important with quadratics that you always know what is a, okay? So what is a in this one? Well, what's in front of the x squared? Well, it's a one, okay? So my method for factoring involves taking the a term, multiplying it times the c term. So over here, it's a times c. What does a times c get us? Well, it's eight. Okay, so now we need to find the factors of eight. Okay, so the factors of eight. Well, I like to put a little line under here and write them out. Well, starting at one, it's one and eight, two and four, there's no others, okay? So, now what factors of these, when I add them, give me B? So I wanna know, so let me put bullet points here, which factors add to get B? That's the question. So add to get B, by now you should see it, um, two and four, those are the ones. So once we identify those, we write them out like so. Since my variable is X, it's gonna be X. I take the sign, both of these are positive, so it's plus two, X plus four. So we type that in. Let's go ahead and do it. X plus two, X plus four if that worked we got it now they're using a method called magic X that's not something that I've ever taught so the the examples on here are not something that you may have seen before but uh, you can use any factoring method you like I'm fine with that let's look at a new uh, new problem okay good I, I want I want to do this one here so um, on this question the, the quick method for this, and, and as honor students, I really would like you guys to get this. You can do this mentally, because you always know that you're going to, my screen not been showing. Wow, okay, whoops. All right, so that's unfortunate. So here is the solution steps that I just did. I can't believe that I didn't show that on the screen. It's unfortunate. So I guess I'm gonna show this again, this method. I wrote down, you can pause this real quick and, and check it out. Let me go back through it. Multiply to A times C, because it's an AX squared plus BX plus C. Uh, that made eight, found the factors of eight to be one and eight, two and four. What factors added to get B? Well, two and four add to get six, okay? So that got me the factors and that ended up being correct. I'm gonna show that again just because I messed up. Sorry about that. Uh, so let's do this one. A is one again, so we're going to multiply that times 28. And you realize this step isn't really necessary, so we get negative 28. What are the factors of negative 28? Well, that's one and 28, two and 14. Does three go into 28? It doesn't. Does four? Yes, four and seven. Five, no, six, no. We know seven does, so I'm done at this point, okay? Now, which ones add to give you negative three? Well, remember that one of these has to be negative, so you can just sort of take that negative sign and put it somewhere and see if it works. Well, if I put a negative here, negative two and 14, that's 12, so that, that does not work. And really what you're looking for is which ones have a difference of three? Well, that's pretty easy, actually. Four and seven, the difference is three. Which one gets the negative, though? Well, if I put it on four, Negative four and seven, that's positive three. That doesn't work. I need it to be negative because that's equal B. So put the negative here. There it is. This is, uh, these are gonna be our factors. So how I write that up, since it's in, um, we have, we're gonna respect the signs here. So it's X plus four, since it's a positive four. And then we have X, this time the minus seven goes there. So let's, uh, let's see if that works x plus 4, x minus 7. <clears throat> okay, and that did work. 
Um, let's show the quick way uh, how I, where I want you guys to be after you practice this enough. Okay. So let's uh, and you can do these qu these questions super quick after you've practiced the factoring enough. So let's look at this um, x squared minus x minus 6. So right away, my brain, I'm thinking, okay, negative 6, the factors, 1, 6, 2, 3. Which ones add to give me negative 1? Okay, well, 1, one and 6, that's a difference of 5. 2 and 3 is a difference of 1. Okay, so it's 2 and 3. Which one's negative? Uh, it's got to be the, the 3, the larger one. So it's, it's 2 and negative 3 add to get negative 1. So it's x plus 2, x minus 3. So with these, this is how quick you should be flying through these factorizations. x plus 2, x minus 3. Boom. Okay, we can do another problem. Here we have, and y'all can just look over on this side now. What, you have negative 9 and negative 8. So what multiplies to get 9? Well, that's 1, 9, 3, and 3. That's it. Which ones add to get negative eight? Well, three and three won't work, that gives you zero. So it has to be one and nine. Okay, so one and nine, which one's negative? Well, in order for it to be negative when I add them, the one and the negative nine added together, that's gonna work. So positive one, so x plus one, x minus nine. Okay, so that's the thought process you want uh, to, to have when you're doing these factorings. So that, that works right there. All right, uh, we're gonna go to the next one, which is, Factoring trinomials with a value greater than, of, of a greater than, uh, than one. So we've been able to do those in our head, but now we have to change our, our methods up for this. 2x squared plus 13x plus 21, okay? So the, the method that I just showed you, we, we have a name for that, it's called slide and divide. We didn't really do the divide part. Okay, slide and divide. Uh, if you have your notebooks, I want you to actually write down this problem. Okay, let's let's write this down so we can you can have these notes handy because this is probably the more complicated part of the factoring for quadratics, but it's so important for this class. You, you need to have this down. So. The slide part comes from where I've been doing that slide, right? We'll talk about the divide part in a second, but when, when we're multiplying that, that A times the C, A times C, this is where that comes in play and why it's important. So we have X squared now plus 13 X plus, plus this is gonna be Two times 21 which is 42 okay so now we need to find the factors of 42 so we get let's take the 42 like we've been doing all the numbers that we've had and uh, oops. we write out the factors 1 and 42 2 and 21 which is what we just saw uh, does 3 go into this? It, 3 does go into it. 3, if you need help from a calculator, you can feel free to pull that out. Let's do 42 divided by 3. 14. Okay. Uh, what else will go into this? Will 4 go into it? Well, if I don't know that, I can just try to divide it by 4. Uh, 4 doesn't work. 5 won't work. 6, does 6 work? It should. 6 and 7. How do I know when I'm done with my factors? Well, when I get to the to the bottom of my list going from one to whatever, uh, I'm done when the next number shows up on the other side here. So this is it, these are all the factors. So the same thing, which ones add to 13? There you go, so which ones add to 13? Well, let's look at this. Uh, 6 and 7 seem to be the ones. I know if I add 6 plus 7, that's 13. And it's a positive 13. So yeah, that seems to be the ones that I need right here, 6 and 7. So we write those up. And what happened last time, x plus 6 and x plus 7, that would work. Let's go ahead and try that over here. x plus 6, x plus 7, submit. 
I got it wrong. So what happened? It says the correct answer should be this right here. So look at that, 2x plus 7 and x plus 3. So I made a mistake here. Of course, order doesn't matter. So you can see, um, we'll, we'll see what happened here. Well, we forgot the second part. So when you're working through these problems on Delta Math, you cannot forget to do this step over here, the divide step. So let's talk about, so it's slide and then divide. So let's go down and show how I should have actually finished this problem off. So you, we slid the two, now we need to divide the two back out. So let's look at this. So I divide the two. Um, so divide by two, divide by two. Okay, so six can be divided by two, that's x plus three. That makes sense. Now what happens with the two being the seven being divided by the two, well, we have a term for that. It's called bottoms up. Uh, so we have slide and divide, but when the number cannot be divided, we do what's called bottoms up. So this two goes to the front. We get two X plus seven. Now that should match our answers over here. So let's look at that. They have it flipped, but since multiplication is uh, commutative, it doesn't matter. This is how they got that answer. If I had put it in like this, it would have counted it correct. So that's going to be uh, factoring a quadratic that has a leading coefficient greater than one. Okay, so these take a little bit more time uh, and with practice. Hopefully last year your teacher uh, hammered those pretty, pretty thoroughly with you and uh, you, you'll do just fine on that. So let's go back to look at the next topic. So let's go to uh, back to our list here. Solve quadratics by taking square roots. So this is uh, one of the essential standards from last year. Solve quadratics taking square roots. So let's go to this one here. Okay, so we have uh, solve for the real values of x. So we have a quadratic here x squared minus 100. So these are actually pretty quick questions to answer. Really, you're just trying to get x alone. So what would you do first to solve this question? I'm trying to get x by itself. Well, we need to move the 100 over. We're using our inverse operations. It's a negative 100, so I need to do a positive 100 to move it over. So this gets me x squared equals 100. How do I get rid of the square? So what inverse operation? The opposite of squaring would be square root, okay? So we're going to square root both sides. So what that does is it gets rid of the square. It sort of crosses it out. It gets rid of it. Let me change the colors of that. We eliminate that, okay? And it leaves us with x. Now what is the square root of 100? Well, hopefully most of y'all have your square roots down, but that is 10. Okay, so watch what happens. How do I, I'm, I gotta get the uh, format down here. Uh, I type that in. Oh, you hit the plus sign here to add a solution and answer. So if I put 10, it's gonna make, count it as wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. If I hit it, it's not gonna give me another op chance to complete it. The problem is this, 10 is not the only answer that gives me 100 if I square it. So if I square 10, uh, that gives me 100. But what else can I square to give myself 10? Well, negative 10 is 100. So we have to account for the positive and the negative solutions of, of this for all these questions. So I need to put the positive negative in front of that. And so I have more than one solution, so I'm gonna hit the plus sign and I wanna put negative 10 in there as well. So I need two solutions. So I'm gonna submit that. We got it correct, okay? So I had the plus or minus. Let's try another one, okay? Uh, let me get another one that is there. Let's do this one, this one is better, okay. So let me start a new page. All right, so Last year, um, you would have learned what is called the birthday cake method. I heard the IM2 teachers 
talking about it last year. However, I never took the time to get familiarize myself with that method. So uh, you can use the birthday cake method for a question like this if you want, but I'm gonna show you the way I'm gonna do it. So this is just like the last question. We need to move that eight over, so plus eight. Get rid of it here. We get x squared equals eight. I wanna get rid of the square. How do we do that? Square root. We get x equals, let's square root the eight. Well, square root of eight is not a perfect square root. Let's do that eight, let's square root it, 2.28, so it doesn't work, okay? So we have to simplify this. I cannot put in square root of eight, okay? Cannot do that. So I need to simplify this. So you have the birthday cake method that you can use. I'm gonna have to look into how that works, but this is how I, have taught my students to simplify these radicals, to break it apart two times four and two times two. So I'm not worried about these anymore. I, these are my prime factors. So we're doing the prime factorization. For square root, I'm looking for every two terms. Well, I have a pair of terms here. And for every pair, I'm pulling one out. So this is x equals two square root two. However, if I type this in, that in here it's going to be wrong again because i can't forget about the plus or minus when i'm solving equations you have to remember that there's multiple solutions to this if i square this you have the negative version that works as well so we need another one so i need negative two or root two so let's submit okay so it looks like it would accept the negative the eight so you'd be fine to stop here with delta math i'm okay with that for now Okay, all right, so that is uh, solving quadratics by taking the square roots. Let's solve quadratics by factoring now. I put in two sections here for this. Uh, so we're gonna start with this question. We have x squared plus five x minus six, uh, 63 equals three x, okay. So before we can factor this, here's the first step. You always want to set one side equal to zero. So I'm, I'm going to move this 3x over here with its like term, 3x, or 5x. Get rid of that. x squared plus, well, what is when I combine these, what do I get? I get 2x, and then the 63 drops down. All right, so now we factor it. So we just did examples of factoring. This one has an a value of 1. So... I'm looking for the factors of 63 that add to give me positive two. So 63 has one and 63. Two won't work, three and 21, okay? And as soon as you see something that works, you can, you can stop, does four work? No, keep my calculator up just in case. Five, that doesn't work. Six, does six go into that? 63 divided by six. You know it doesn't work if there's a decimal, so that doesn't work. What about seven? 63 divided by seven, that's nine, so seven and nine. And some of you don't need to use calculator. You, you know your uh, times tables pretty well, but it looks like we found what we want. Seven and nine should add, or well, they, none of these add to two, but we know that the difference, and by the way, this is a negative 63, because it was negative, so one of these has to be negative. So difference is two here, Let's which one needs to be negative? Well, it can't be negative 9 because if negative 9 gives us negative 2. So we want 7 to be negative. So this is our, that is our, um, oh my gosh, I've, I've done it again. <laughs> Here's the question. Sorry. I'm so sad about that. Uh, we're solving, we're factoring this quadratic. Let me go back up. I had to move the 3x over. Show this again. So the original question was was this. Still getting the hang of this, y'all. 5x, and this is 3x. So that's the original. We had to move this over, 3x. This went away, gave us zero. Combining these gave me 2x, dropped everything else down. So we're doing the factoring. Here's our factors that we got to. One uh, of negative 63, it's negative seven and nine. I had to get two, so we get x minus 7, x plus 9, 
equals zero. This is not the answer. This is not what this wants us to do. It wants us to actually solve for the, we, we're trying to find the zeros, the x-intercepts. That, that's what we're trying to do in this problem. So what we do is we set each of these equal to zero separately. Okay, and we, and we solve those. So what do I do to get z, x by itself? Well, I add the seven, x equals seven. So that's one of them. And then over here, I'm gonna subtract nine. So x equals negative nine, perfect. That's how you do that. You'll notice how the signs just changed, which is a pattern that you'll notice. We could actually do this pretty quick just by changing those signs. But let's talk about how you wanna submit your answer here. I'm not gonna type seven, I don't know if this will work. Oh, it will, okay, so you can push comma to separate them. Uh, but seven and negative nine, submit, and that works, okay? So that's what you're doing. You're just factoring and solving for the zeros. You can definitely look at some more examples in here for that. Let's look at doing one with a coefficient greater than one. So that takes that slide and divide method. So let's look at a question for that. So we get uh, 6x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals 8x plus 1. So <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and get zero on one side. So let's move all these terms to the left. That's the goal. So I'm gonna move the eight X by subtracting it with its like term, which is the negative three X. I'm gonna move the one, I gotta subtract it. So these, these go away, by the way. Uh, these will go away, I'm subtracting that from this. So that gets me six X squared. When I combine these, I get negative 11 X. Combine these, you get three. There's my, um, there's where I wanna be. Now it's time to factor it. So remember the slide and divide method. We slide this up. That gets you, uh, gets us uh, x squared minus 11x. Six times three is 18. I'm gonna leave the equals off for this. Let's factor the 18. So the 18 will factor into one and 18, two and nine, three and six, four, no, five, no. Here we go, there's our factors. Which ones add to give us negative 11? Well, the only ones that add to get 11, we know that the difference is not one and 18, or that's the difference between one and 18 is 17, so that, that's not gonna work. Three and six adds to get nine, difference is three. So these are the only ones, if I add a nine and two, that gets me 11, but I need negative 11. So what you can do here is if we make both of these negative, it still works. Because if I multiply them, it still gives me positive 18. If I uh, add them, I get the negative 11. Let's write that, let's write this out. X minus two, X minus nine. Okay, so now, um, we don't just solve it from here. It's not just positive two and nine, okay? We have to, we can't forget our divide. So we did the slide up here, and now we're gonna do the divide. So we're gonna divide by what we slid. So the six is what we slid, so that goes on the bottom on both sides. So let's talk about this. You'll notice that neither of these divide evenly, and we talked about bottoms up but we don't wanna do that until after we've simplified these a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and simplify it. Two over six is gonna simplify to one over three. Nine over six is going to simplify to nine over six, that is three over two, okay? Now, once we've simplified it, now we can do the bottoms up. So these numbers are gonna slide up to the front because neither of them are dividing evenly anymore. So let's go ahead and write this out. It's gonna be three X minus one times two X minus three. That's equal to zero. This is a very long question. So uh, I didn't put too many of these on here, but it's very important that you know how to go through and solve these. So the practice is gonna be necessary for you. Okay, so again, you can set them equal to zero. And for, I'll solve this one first. You add one. Go away, I get 
3x equals 1. Then I'm going to divide by 3 to get x alone. So it's going to be x equals 1 third. That's going to be one of them. Let's do this one. So I add 3. Okay. It gives me two. this goes away. I get 2x equals 3. Divide the 2. Okay. This is x equals 3 halves. So let's submit those. Those are the answers we're looking for. So let's go ahead and do one. If you hit the forward slash on your keyboard, or you can, I think there's a fraction button in here. If you just hit division, it works. So one third is one of them. And I can hit the comma, which will give me another solution. And I want the three divided by two. So let's submit that. There it is. Okay, so they just go straight to the factorization. We had our factors correct up here. How you want to solve this? That's probably on this whole thing the most lengthy problem that you'll do. Okay, but very important that you understand how to do it. All right, we've made it to the last one. We're 41 minutes in. This is a very long video. I apologize about that, but um, it's almost like being in a class, 45 minute class. So uh, make sure that you practice these skills after we, you're finished with the video. All right, so the last skill, and I'll make sure that I don't mess this up, using the quadratic, or solving quadratic equation, for solve quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula. All right, so the quadratic formula is this right here. X equals negative B plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so that's how we write that up. Um, <clears throat> this helps you do the exact same thing that we just did on the last question. So instead of factoring, you can use the quadratic formula to solve those questions. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I pretty much only use the quadratic formula when I was going through uh, high school and college to solve these things. So that, and I got by pretty well for pretty much all, th all the way through college, I used the quadratic formula when I needed to. I'm gonna use this on this question. So we have V squared plus four V plus nine equals negative two V. Uh, so for this, you always have to set it equal to zero, okay? First thing we need to do is move the term or if you have terms over, uh, go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add 2v over here. So this is v squared plus 6v plus 9 equals 0. So now for the quadratic formula, we need to know what a, b, and c are. Well, using this form ax squared plus bx plus c for quadratics, we know that a is 1, b is 6, and C is nine. So we're gonna fill in the, the formula up here with those numbers. So uh, the formula is X equals, and we have negative B. So I know that I'm gonna change this to a negative six, plus or minus square root of B squared, which I always put this in parentheses, minus four times A, which is one, times C, which is nine, over two times a, which is one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start inside of the square root, that's the best place to start. And we can go ahead and, and just sort of simplify this. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this down here, negative six plus or minus, what is six squared? Well, that's 36 minus four times one times nine. So four times one is one, four times nine, or excuse me, four times one is four times nine is 36. Ah, happens to be the same number, that makes things a lot easier. 2 times 1 is 2. All right, let's continue. Negative 6 plus or minus 36 minus 36 is 0. Divided by 2. This gets me negative 6 over, this is plus or minus, okay, over 2. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so when I divide that, I get negative 3. Okay, so on this one, we only have one solution, which is negative three. 
like double checking myself to make sure that for AC, yeah, yeah. Good. Submit answer. Got it right. Okay. Uh, now normally there would be uh, there's a multiplicity here. It's just touching on the on the actual graph of it, but that's the process here. Some of these are going to have fractions. Let me show you some some of the other problems that you'll end up with. So here there was fractions, and we had to split it off. I wish I'd done one of those, but uh, you're just going through and solving. Can't forget the plus or minus part of this, even though it went away when I was solving it. So what this really would look like is negative six plus zero over two, and let me write it out this way. So it sort of splits. So negative six minus zero over two. Both of these end up having solutions that are negative three, but we only count it one time. So that's what happened with this problem. <sighs> I'm so sad that I've messed this up. I'm gonna crop that out. We start again. Okay, uh, since I messed that up, let's, I, I'll crop that out and we'll start a new question here. Uh, I messed it up. Let's go ahead and uh, start this question. 11y squared minus 19y minus 10 minus 4y squared, or equals negative 4y squared. So there's our problem here. Uh, we have to use our quadratic formula, which is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So to start off, we need to get one of these, uh, one side equal to zero. So I'm gonna move this four y squared over. We're gonna add that to its like term, four y squared. So this gets me 15 y squared minus 19 y minus 10 equals zero. So we need to know what a, b, and c are. Remember it's a x squared plus b x plus C. We're going to go ahead and list out what those are. So it's 15, negative 19, and negative 10. Pretty large number, so I'm definitely going to use a calculator to help me get through this. But let's go ahead and set it up. So it's x equals negative b. So the 19 is already a negative 19. So that just becomes, I'm going to write it like this, just to not confuse myself. Negative, negative 19 be a positive square root of negative 19 squared I always use parentheses there minus 4 times I'm going to put these in parentheses 4ac so 15 negative 10 all over 2 times 15 which is a we got that um, we start on the inside And we're going to go ahead, we're going to square that 19. Now, I don't know what 19 squared is. It's a negative, by the way, so, uh, but we want to square it. So it's 361. I'm going to go ahead and change the sign here. So this is 19 plus or minus square root 361. Let's see what 4 times 15 times negative 10 is. So uh, this is, I like to write it, I like to leave this negative alone. I like that minus here. So it's 4 times 15 times negative 10. I almost like to put all of these in parentheses. So 4 times 15 times 10, which is a negative. So we get negative 600. That goes over 2 times 15, which is 30. Okay, so now we need to combine in here. So minus negative negative, this becomes a plus. So I'm going to change the sign of that, and we're going to add... 361, which is 961. So I get, and well, these are some large numbers here, 19 plus or minus square root of 961. And I'm very hopeful that that is a even nice square root. So let's, uh, let's square root it. It is, it's 31. So we get 19 plus or minus 31 over 30. Okay, 
So here is what I didn't get on the last part uh, of the question I'd already done, which y'all didn't see. Uh, but here you have to respect both the plus and the minus. So we split it into two branches. It becomes 19 plus 31 over 30. And then uh, 19 minus 31 over 30. And then you just continue your work through the side. So 19 plus 31, uh, I can actually do that. That's 50 over 30, which if I, GCF is a 10, if you divide those, you get five over three, if I simplify it. Now we go over here, 19 minus 31. So that is a difference of uh, 12, but it's gonna be negative, negative 12. Okay, 30 is still on the bottom. So what is 12 over 30? What's their common factor? Well, I think it's six. Six will divide into both of those. So this is gonna be negative two over 30 divided by six is five. Okay, so there should be our solutions for this. Go ahead and try it out. So I'm gonna do five divided by three, comma, I want negative two divided by five. And there we go. Let's go ahead and submit. I got it correct. Perfect. All right, so that's gonna conclude the review for IMath 2. You need to make sure that you get your Delta Math assignment completed by this Friday. If you have any questions, reach out to me on Remind or email and I'll be happy to respond with whatever, uh, whatever you need.